Hi, my name is Jake Wiskirchen, and I am the mental health of the Guns and Mental Health part of Walk the Talk America. I've been invited in to talk to you a little bit about why it's important to be mentally aware and what that consists of. So as a licensee of mental health care in Nevada, I know a little bit about what goes on in the brain and your mind and all that sort of stuff. I'm also a concealed carrier and have been for more than 10 years. So I can try to hybridize these two concepts into something hopefully that you can digest and take home. By now, your instructor and probably Mike Sedini, the founder of WTTA, have talked to you a little bit about why the organization exists and why this component is included in your training today. My job now is to bridge the gap between firearms and mental health care in a way that makes sense. So let me tell you a little bit. As a dad, as a husband, as a concealed carrier, as a Second Amendment enthusiast and supporter, I have found no problem jumping over into the mental health world because I know how important it is to be uh, mentally sharp, psychologically attuned, and focused on myself and the people around me so that I can be the best person I can be. That works really well in the firearms community too because as natural deciders of protection, we want to jump in front of things and keep people safe. And, and that's just kind of part of our calling. That's why you're in this class today, to be more proficient with your firearm, to learn maybe intuitive defensive shooting, to be more situationally aware. And all of that plays into how your brain works in response to the environment going on around you. I'm gonna go over some basic stuff about emotional functioning because I think that emotional functioning forms the core of everything that we do when we interface with our environment, with people, at our jobs, with our families and so forth. So let me lay out real quickly for you. We have 10 core emotions and don't worry about writing this stuff down because I have a whole video series that your instructor will pass out for you in the form of a flyer and you can watch these videos at your leisure later. I don't wanna bore you today, take it on your own time, but please, please, please definitely digest this stuff because I think it's critically important to navigating life. So our 10 core emotions, as they function in our brain, all have a purpose. And that purpose is to tell us what the stimuli in the environment are doing and how we can respond to them. So if I'm feeling fear, for example, fear's job is to tell me that there's a threat or a danger present. And I need to navigate that with cognition, logic, reason, not be in an emotional state when I respond to this fear stimulus. I talk more about this in the video. So again, don't worry about writing it all down. But the point is to know this stuff really, really well so that when fear or excitement or happiness or shame or guilt even present in our lives, we don't just become victims to the emotion, but we can embrace it, know how to navigate through, and then make a logical decision following that emotional experience. So again, please understand this stuff. Take the time outside of this class to go study it well. And I promise it'll improve your relationships, your uh, peer, your boss, employee, communications, uh, how you raise your kids, all sorts of stuff. And if you happen to be like a youth sports coach like I am or a firearms instructor, it'll help you learn a lot better how to work through those coursework and the classing and the uh, classes and the teaching as well. I'm going to move on to something else. What's really critically important in the realm of emotional functioning is being aware of what your body is doing, what your brain is doing. And in when you're aware, you can be more in charge of your responses. We don't wanna be reflexively reacting to what goes on in our lives, especially when it comes to something like a defensive shooting or deployment of a firearm in a lawful situation. What we wanna do is make sure that we're thoughtful and in charge at all times. And the way to do this is to practice it. So when you go home and you watch the videos, it's just me in front of a whiteboard explaining how your brain works, you'll learn but then your job is to teach it also. Teach it to your children, teach it to your significant others, and then rehearse this stuff just like you would rehearse dry fire drills and putting rounds on target. We want to be in charge of our responses. And the reason we want to be in charge of our responses, again, like I said, so we don't become victims to our emotions. This is critically important because, as you all know, you probably heard of mood disorders. Well, mood disorders are just emotions that last a really long time. Mood disorders can get us into a bad shape. At its core, Walk the Talk America is a suicide prevention organization. But what we really want to do is get upstream from that and put people in charge of their emotions so they don't slide into mood disorders and then become suicidal. You've often heard that suicidal is an impulsive activity. And throughout the course of this video, you're probably going to hear Rob Pincus, for example, talk about responsible storage and separation in time of crisis. Well, we don't know what a time of crisis is unless we're self-aware. And the way that we become self-aware is we have to practice knowing what we feel, when we feel it, why we feel it, and then pushing through and responding in a logical, coherent way to whatever it is that made us feel how we felt. What we don't want to do is be sliding into 
reflexive, you know, despondency or a crisis situation that we don't even know we're in. And then we find ourselves in a suicidal situation or, uh, or even homicidal in some cases, we definitely don't want that. So in order to avoid this stuff, it requires interpersonal awareness. One of the best ways to do that is to bounce things off of a trusted friend or colleague. Now, as society continues its lurch toward separation and individualization on our devices and our social media platforms, what we risk losing is actual human to human contact. And that human to human contact is really important for holding ourselves accountable. When we talk about accountability, it's not just accountability to our decisions and our leadership roles and the things that we do in life. It's also accountable one to another for what we're feeling inside. And if I'm feeling something, but I'm not necessarily being honest with myself, maybe my, my spouse, my wife in this case, could point this, point this thing out to me and say, hey, you know, babe, I think you're sliding a little sideways. You've been a little agitated. You're getting short with the kids. Um, what's going on? So that's an accountability partner that then makes me go, you know what? I have been on edge. Maybe I'm overstressed. Maybe I'm anxious. Maybe I haven't gotten enough sleep. Maybe I'm not eating so well. Maybe in that time of crisis, I need to be aware that I don't need to be around my firearms at that point, right? So that's what accountability is, is really all about. The simple fact is that although you're taking defensive shooting classes, you're taking marksmanship classes, you're taking your concealed carry weapons course, we are far more likely to turn our weapons on ourselves as firearms owners than we are to use them in a defensive situation. So we need to be aware of that. We need to practice emotional intelligence. We need to be emotionally aware. We need to be honest. We need to be vulnerable and we need to be intimate with the people around us so that we don't get to that place. And if we do, we have a plan and the plan can look something like an agreement with a significant other or a good friend or a trusted colleague to intercede and separate ourselves from the guns in that time of need. Now, it's great that you know the state that you're in is requiring this to be part of the course. Some of us may have a different opinion about whether or not that should be required, uh, whether or not it should be compelled upon us, but that doesn't matter. What matters is that I'm happy to be in front of you talking about this right now, because maybe without that, we never would have met. And I know I'm not really meeting you, but we can get to know each other a little bit through you watching the videos, uh, going to the Walk the Talk America website, taking a free and anonymous mental health screening, and continually checking in on yourself, continually improving, continually listening to podcasts, watching YouTube videos, reading books, and just simply learning more about how you tick. Ultimately, what we want is we want to be aware enough that when the crisis happens, we remove ourselves from the things that are most likely to put ourselves or others at risk. This is not government interference. This is just good, responsible firearms ownership. And I think that being mentally aware should be part of everyone's training. You probably heard Mike talk about it, and I'll reiterate it again, that when we separate ourselves from our firearms, it's to do so to make everybody safer. So some people have an aversion to putting their their gun in a locked facility or a locked, locked facility in a locked box or a locked safe. Um, but a biometric safe or a quick access storage container should be as easily accessed as it is for you to put rounds on target. We spend a lot of time at the range. We spend a lot of time knowing our firearms. We spend a lot of time customizing them. But we should spend just the same amount of time accessing our guns in a critical incident, in the dark, next to our bed, with our loved ones around us, so that we don't hesitate and we don't just haphazardly leave them around. That is also part of training. Physical training, mental awareness training, emotional awareness training, and of course, figuring out how to put rounds on target. Thank you for watching this video. I really appreciate your participation, and I'll kick it over to Rob now.